This year was the first year we run the benevolent competition for charities to use our technology, have access to it for free to be able to solve an important question. And the thing that really stood out for us with the Parkinson's application was first that it was not just one charity, it was two charities and also other uh, academic groups involved, but so truly collaborative. But secondly, that the question they wanted answering was absolutely spot on what our technology could do. And so we really felt that there was an opportunity to make an impact in the year-long time frame that we had. And a further thing that is really exciting about the charity is that they have mechanisms to be able to take those findings forward so there's a clear route to the patient. So the overall aims for this project are first of all to use our platform to build a systems biology map, if you will, of Parkinson's disease using all the information out there and then take that and come up with new hypotheses for treating Parkinson's. We can do that either by identifying targets for which there are no drugs and we can think about then using uh, platforms to generate new molecules or we can take uh, existing drugs, identify existing drugs which then could be moved very rapidly into Parkinson's patients. So repositioning molecules that have either failed in another indication or are not currently being used for Parkinson's to actually treat the disease. I mean, one of the reasons that Benevolent is headquartered in the UK is that the UK is a fabulous place for doing AI in drug discovery. First of all, the talent pool here for machine learning and AI, natural language processing and all the other components that are important for our platform is superb. And secondly, of course, the biomedical research base here is superb. I think the UK has a significant advantage both for disrupting drug discovery because of its access to AI, but also really accelerating the investments in biomedical research that have been made here so that they translate into something meaningful for patients. So the key things that we were looking for uh, when we uh, wrote the project working with Benevolent AI is to identify new drugs for repurposing. So ideally we were looking to identify three drugs um, that we could actually take down further research routes or accelerate into development. Um, because it's 50 years ago since the last treatment was developed and patients won't wait, uh, they need new drugs now. So the non-motor symptoms in Parkinson's are a major unmet need. Because there are very little treatments uh, to correct these symptoms, uh, we need to really heavily invest in research to try and fill this gap because they're uh, such an unmet need. So the speed at which R&D has been developing uh, for treatments for Parkinson's has been relatively slow. Um, the problem was at the beginning we didn't know what was causing Parkinson's so it's taken a long time to actually answer those questions and now we have those questions answered we can do the serious work of actually developing drugs. Negative side effects, well yes one of them I'm demonstrating for you right now is the dyskinesia which are involuntary movements. Um, this is generally regarded as um, not inevitable, but a common side effect of uh, taking levodopa over a number of years. Now, there's one other treatment that's substantially different from meds, which is deep brain stimulation, which I've got in. So this is two electrodes um, placed deep in my brain to a particular target and they've got wires, the wires just hidden in my scalp go down to here. I've got a little battery in my chest, a bit like a pacemaker. And that provides an electric current, just a few volts, to those electrodes in that particular region of the brain. And that works. It's not a miracle, but it works. I've certainly found it efficacious. Um, it's a big decision to take because it's a major operation, but other than drugs, that's pretty much the only treatment available. I know, I know nothing's going to happen quickly, and everyone says, oh, in five years' time, and that seems to be a removable feast. Five years, five years, five years. But I think we are actually um, getting to a point where five years may be a reasonable expectation of something. So it's a very exciting time to be uh, 
involved with Parkinson's research. Thank you.